you're a beginner at After Effects and you want a simple tutorial that actually shows you what you need to do, then this is the video. And today I'm going to be showing you how to cut clips, how to mess with keyframes, how to add effects, how to add text, and a lot more. Before we begin, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Let's get on with the video. When you initially open After Effects, this is what you're going to see. So to make a new project, you hit new project and then you will be met with this screen. So actually you don't have a composition yet. So you're going to make a composition and a composition I would say is a composed sequence of your clips, your edits, everything that you do. This panel will then show up. Just put it in the middle here. First of all, I'm going to name my comp After Effects Edit. Then you can go down to the dimensions here. This right here is a square and you can adjust the aspect ratio by pulling up or down or typing in your dimensions. This is just an example of one aspect ratio, but there's plenty of others. I can put some on the screen right now. Additionally, in this panel, you can see the frame rate. The frame rate is how many frames per second that will be in your edit. If you have a slower computer, I would recommend not going above 60 FPS. Here we have the resolution. The resolution means how much of the full resolution that you're going to see. So if we're talking in terms of quality of your edit, then for example, quarter would make it really pixely. I usually have mine in half. You can also put it in full, but that makes it a bit laggy and a bit slow. But again, when you render the final edit, it's going to be full quality. The start time code and the duration indicates how long your timeline down here is going to be. How many seconds? I'm just going to say 20 seconds for now, but you can adjust it in any way that you want. And okay, now you're met with this. You have your composition, but you have nothing in your timeline yet. I'm going to show you the easiest way that you can import footage right now. Before we import, this is the panel where you're going to see all your footage. Now to import footage into this panel right here, you're going to want to go to File, Import, and then File. You can choose anything that you want, and then you can import. You can also import multiple pictures by holding Shift. Now you have imported these three pictures into the panel, and you can see they're actually not in the composition yet, which is because they're only imported in this panel. Now another way of importing your pictures is the other and there is a even easier method, which I use on a day-to-day -day basis. You go to your folders or finder, whatever software you use, and then you can basically just select and drag over here. You can also select and drag down here. So I'm just gonna drag it over here, and there you go. Very simple. Now we have these four photos of these cats. Now to drag your picture into the composition, you're going to hold this and drag it over here. It automatically snaps to the middle, so make sure it's in the middle if you want to do that. You can also take this and then drag it onto the timeline. If you want the picture to start at the beginning, you can either drag it to the start or do this. Before we do anything with this, I'm just going to explain what this is so you have an understanding of what to do. This down here is called the timeline. This is where you manage all of your clips, all of your layers, all of your effects. This right here is called your time indicator. If you drag it around, you can drag it to your preferred time. So to actually mess with this picture, first of all, zoom it in so it matches the comp size. And then you're going to want to press S. This is the scale. The scale indicates how big your photo or video is. In the composition. Alongside with scale, there's also position and rotation. That is the three basic movement options. So if you press P, then you can mess with the position. And if you press R, you can rotate it in any way that you want. So scale was S, R was rotation, and P was position. Now that you have scaled the picture to the composition, we're going to want to pre-compose it. What this does is that it composes your photo within the composition. If you right click on your clip, pre-compose, and then press this move all attributes into the new composition. So you press OK, and there you go. Now if you press S again, zoom it out, then it is perfectly square because it is within this composition. Now we need to add our second clip because we want to cut it. I want to split it at two seconds. So I'm going to split it by pressing Command Shift D. And then you can delete this by pressing delete on your keyboard. So now this picture's duration is 2 seconds. It stops at 2 seconds. Now we're going to want to add another picture. So we're going to drag this picture over here and then press S. And then we pre-compose it by pressing here and then OK. And then you can cut it again by pressing Command Shift D. 
and then you can delete this. Now we have split the two clips, so one clip is here and the other clip is here. This green line right here also needs to render. It needs to load all the new effects that you have added. So you can see here, if I move the picture, it needs to load that position of the new picture. So if you add a lot of effects, then that might be the reason why the audio is playing slowly or why it's taking a lot of time to play. Now we're at phase two. Now I want to show you how you can make these images move. I'm going to add a few more pictures and you can do the same. So if you press S, the scale is going to appear. This right here is called the stopwatch. If you press this clock, it's going to set a keyframe. This keyframe indicates the values you have your scale in. So if it says 100 right here, then it's going to remember this value for right here. If I put my keyframe over here and then I mess with the scale of this, I put it to 160, then it's going to mark these numbers as a keyframe, as a point in time. So if you go over here, it moves accordingly to these keyframes. Now comes the graphs. The way you're going to do this is you highlight these two keyframes, make sure that they are both highlighted, then you right click on the keyframe, it's very important that you click on the keyframe, not right here or here, on the keyframe, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Easy ease allows you to make a graph, so let's go into the graph editor. You can see the graph editor right here, and if you want to zoom in on specifically this graph, you can use this tool right here. If you click the graph right here, two knobs will appear. These knobs indicate how your graph is going to go. So if you put your knob right here and the other knob over here, it tightens the beginning and then it gradually goes down towards the end. So this right here is the keyframe that says 160 and this right here is 100. So the way you're going to understand graphs is that this graph peaks at the beginning and then it goes down. So that means for the motion, it's going to be fast at the beginning and slow at the end. Also, we're just going to apply motion blur. Looks like these pancakes, we can apply them to all of our clips. So if you exit the graph editor and play your clip, it's going to be really, really smooth. Now we're going to move on to position, which means where your photo is going to be. So if we move the time indicator slightly to the right and then press P to open the position, and press the stopwatch to create a keyframe, we can then go to the end. You can either do this by dragging your time indicator or pressing O. O makes you go to the end of a clip and I makes you go to the beginning of a clip, which is pretty nice and convenient. So we're gonna go to the end of our clip. So let's drag it over here like this. As you can see now, it was over here in the beginning and then it moves to the left. So if we were to put the keyframe right here, then it's gonna do it a lot faster and then stop because this is the time period in which it moves. So we're gonna highlight these again, right click on the keyframe, keyframe assistant and easy ease. For some users, you can also press F9. Unlike before, we want it to peak at the end instead of the beginning. Also, if it for some reason doesn't show these knobs, you can just press down here to separate the dimensions and then it works fine. So as you can see, the graph here peaks at the end. It gradually goes up and then peaks right here. We can also see this in the way it moves. So right here, fast at the beginning, fast at the end. Also, to make this go away, we're gonna just wanna search in the effects and presets for motion tile. And then we can quickly apply it by dragging it down to our clip. And then a panel right here is going to show up with the effects settings. At output width, you're gonna wanna put 300. In output height, you're gonna wanna put 300. And then mirror edges. Now there's no black border and it looks great. We're gonna quickly do the other position and then I'm gonna tell you a bit about rotation and anchor point. First you press R on your keyboard and then this pops up. Now we press on the stopwatch right here to indicate a keyframe of a specific value. Then you press O to go to the end of your clip and then you can rotate it in any way that you want. Now we're gonna highlight these keyframes and then we're gonna press F9 or keyframe assistant and then easy ease. Then you go into the graph editor and because I want it to peak at the end, I want it to be fast at the end, I am going to make it gradually go up like this. I'm gonna try and do it myself now and then you also try and do it yourself. Now for opacity. Opacity indicates how much of your clip is visible. If we press T, the opacity will show. And then for example, if I press the stopwatch and then go to the end by pressing O and then put it zero, then it completely fades out. 
So now we've talked about scale, position, rotation, and opacity. One more thing I want to mention before we move on to phase three is the anchor point. The anchor point can be kind of hard to understand for beginners, so I'm just going to show you an example. You can see here the anchor point is in the middle. This right here is the anchor point. To mess with the anchor point and move only the anchor point, you press Y and then you hold this and you can move it anywhere that you want. What the anchor point does is that it moves around this point. So if we were to put it down here and then we press R to rotate, it rotates around this point. Now moving on to phase three. I know you're probably wondering, what are all of these tools? You can see one of them I have selected right now. This is the anchor point tool. I'm gonna quickly explain these tools and then we're gonna move on to the final step, which is the text. I know this can probably seem like a lot of tools, but you do get used to it and it gets a lot easier. First of all, this tool is the selection tool. This is the ordinary and the normal tool that you usually have selected. The hand tool is that so you can mess with the composition and where you are looking at the composition. The search tool is basically just where you can highlight anywhere you want to go. Boom, you're there. These three are for 3D. They're a bit more advanced. So let me know if you guys want a 3D tutorial, just a basic 3D tutorial. Then we have the ellipse tool, and if you hold it down, you have all of these different tools. Let's say we need to mask this, and we want to mask it into a rectangle. Then we can mask it like this. And if you want it to be a perfectly square rectangle, then you press shift, because then it is going to be perfectly square. Then we have the pen tool. This is also a masking tool. You can just mask it in any way that you want. And if you don't want this, but you want this, then you just hold down on the point and then let your mouse drag because then you can move it in any way that you want. These right here are not as relevant, so I'm not gonna talk about them today. So now we're gonna move on to the text. To make a text, you either press Command T and then you have yourself a text, or you can press the text tool right here. And then you press anywhere on the comp. Again, you type anything that you like and then you can align it in the middle and it's gonna look amazing. Also, if you don't have the align right here in the panel, you can go to window and then make sure you have a line check. There's actually a lot of built-in presets like decoder fade in. This is entirely within After Effects. And if you're interested in more of these text effects, you can just go within the text folder and there's a ton of different options that you can choose from. If you like this video or you found it helpful, please consider subscribing. It's free. See you in the next video. Bye.